Hi, Lisa from Lori's Country Cottage. Welcome to How Tuesdays. Today I'm going to show you an updated version of the face mask. It's been almost six months since my last video. Join me, I'll show you how to make it. As I said, it's been almost six months to the day since I did the very first face mask video. Things have changed and things have updated. We have found a local supplier and have designed our own face mask. It has five sizes and includes an optional filter pocket. So these are the five sizes. On our samples, we've done measurements. Because we can't try the mask on with the COVID regulations, you're able to measure the people in your family to find the right size. So extra large, large, medium, and now we're moving to kid sizes. This is the small, and then the extra small. Let me show you how to cut them out. All right, let me show you our template. So the template has five sizes and different colored lines for each size and then a separate line for your filter cutting line. And I'll show you what order to cut. We also have included a grain line on our template. So line the grain line up with your fabric and then you're going to cut your two straight edges first. All right, those are my straight edges. Now I'm gonna rotate my mat and I'm gonna make a medium today. So here's my medium line. I'm going to slide my template so that my medium line is on those two cut lines I just made. And now I can cut my curve and it will be the medium size and the inside curve. And I used, um, I made a couple of these the other night. I used my regular 45 millimeter rotary cutter and you can see that that cut just fine. So that is the exterior of the, ma the mask. I'm just gonna get this thread that didn't cut, there we go. And let me show you now how to cut the liner. The liner is gonna be a little bit smaller. So again, I'll lay it on my grain line cut my two straight edges, voila, rotate my mat, and now I need to find the filter pocket edge for medium, and there it is. There's a dash line, and we have the words written right on the template, medium filter pocket edge. And again, I'll make my curved cuts, And I'll just show you the different sizes. So there is the exterior and the lining, and there's your filter, so it's quite a bit shorter. So you can see in the mask how it's shorter there to fit your filter in. All right, so how do you build your mask? Now you will take your three layers, your exterior fabric, your lining, and your filter pocket layers, just like the last mask, place them right sides together and stitch a quarter inch. And you'll do that for all three pieces. The other thing you need to do, and I'll just show you because this is our filter piece. We've also included the nose wire guide. So I'm gonna place this on top, take my marking pencil and make a dot on the right side of my filter pocket piece. And we're gonna use that near the end of the mask. So here are my three pieces, my exterior, my lining, and my filter pocket. And you can see how it's smaller. So the next step is to take your filter pocket liner and hem your two straight edges. And that just creates a clean edge for you. Next step, we need to put them all together. So this is the liner right side up. Take your filter also right side up because that's how it's gonna look in the mask. 
and now treat those as one unit. And that unit needs to go right sides together with your exterior. So I'm gonna line up my seams really nice. Of course, you know that I use um, my Wonder Clips for everything. So I'm gonna Wonder Clip my top edge. And there's my liner, just a little bit shorter than my other pieces. And I do find it really helpful because this is a curved edge to actually um, use the Wonder Clips or use pins if you prefer, whatever you prefer, but it's good to clip them. And I did clip both the top and the bottom. I like to start in the middle because we want that center seam to be really nice. Two of my seams are going one direction and I make sure the other one is going the other direction. And it just lessens the bulk in that center seam because if you choose to use the filter pocket, and it is optional if you don't want to use it. It creates extra bulk with three seams. All right, so I've got everything clipped together. And now I go to my sewing machine. And again, I'm going to stitch a quarter inch along this curved edge and a quarter inch along the long straighter edge. And this is what it looks like when it's all sewn together. The next step is to turn it right side out. The only thing you need to remember is to turn it so that your liner and your lining stay together. So I'm going to turn it like this. And you know, if you happen to turn it in the wrong order, you would just have to turn it back and then turn it the right direction. So once the mask is right side out, you'll give it a really good press. All right. There we go. So now you see my exterior, my lining, and then there's our pocket with the nice, nice finished hem. I'm going to give this a really good press to get a nice crisp seam and then we just have a little bit of stitching to do. So here's my mask all together. All I've done is done an edge stitch along both edges. And then you can see on my sample, maybe you can't see because maybe the camera's too far away, but I have two little white dots. That was the marking point that I used the template on. And it just shows me how far away to stitch to create the pocket for my nose wire. So I did an edge stitch, top and bottom, and then did a stitch along the length of the top so that I can put my nose wire in. So we sell the nose wires here at the store. They really are, um, in my opinion, absolutely necessary for anyone who wears glasses because we have problems with fogging. Okay. So I've got it a little too far. Let me just pull it back to the middle. So there's my nose wire. So you can see how that could tuck nicely around your nose so you have no fog. To finish up the mask, we need to create a casing for our elastic. So I've just taken the raw edge, folded a quarter inch, and then I fold it three eighths of an inch in just to make sure it's big enough, it'll fit my bodkin in and fit my quarter inch elastic. And here you go, I've already used my bodkin to pull in our uh, elastic that already has the cord lock on it. I was curious to see if it worked, if it would be big enough, it's plenty big enough. So you pull through one side, join your two little ends and then stitch it and then pull it so that casing or that stitching is inside your casing. And I'll just show you on my finished mask. This is what it looks like. So you can't see my join, I can feel it, it's right in here. So these elastics worked really well. I was really happy with them. They're very good because you don't have to figure out what size to make, they're adjustable. We also carry 
the individual um, elastic locks. If you have your elastic at home, go ahead and use it. Just make your elastic a little bit long and you can use the cord locks to adjust your elastic. Let me show you a little bit more about sizing. All right, I just wanted to show you a finished mask. Since you can't try on the sizes, I just wanted to show you this is a large and here's how it fits on my face. And I wanted to show you too, so you can see how the uh, cord locks work on the elastic. So it just slips over my ear and then to tighten, I feel like the guy on the airplane, you know, the steward or the stewardess that shows you how to tighten that, but that's exactly how it works. If you have it too tight, give it a little pull and it loosens up. Fits nicely under my chin and you can see no fog. So this is a large. Whew. Well, thank you for joining me for How Tuesdays. Um, if you're interested in our template, we have them in the store right now. We also have the elastics with the cord locks attached. We have the cord locks separately, plus all the elastic you could ever need. And we have the nose wires in stock. If you look below, there's a link to the pattern. It's free as well. We want everyone to be safe. So you're welcome to click that and print the pattern. Thank you for joining me for How Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. Uh, tomorrow is What's Up Wednesday with Tanya. So join her tomorrow morning. Thanks.